Vietnam's manufacturing sector value added mm. is still very limited, just about 10%, 15%, you know, okay, depending on the item. How do you expect it to grow um, in 2011 and beyond? Um, I think that, you know, the Vietnam's exports, you know, this year, you know, we have good, you know, prospect. Yeah. Not because of the devaluation, though. Not because of devaluation. No, so we're all. not actually competing with Thailand or no, whoever no, 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 else. See. Most of Vietnam's exports are priced in U.S. dollars from the mm. beginning. Yeah. Then, you know, changing the exchange rate, yeah. you know, that's not going to really change your export price. Yeah. So devaluation will not really give you that much advantage, mm. you know, price competitiveness in the international market. I don't think that, you know, devaluation will have that much impact mm. on exports. But so in what, is the, what is going to help Vietnam in, in terms of exporting? In terms of exporting? Um, the short run... You talked about value added. Right. Do you see Vietnam moving forward into value added? Um, eventually. Eventually. E eventually. See, right now, I mean, this really brings me back to the story of this you know, trade deficit. Yeah. See, so domestic value added, you know, it's only 10%, 15%. Mm -hmm. Simply, then that means that you know, if we want to export more, mm -hmm. first you go to import raw materials, mm -hmm. intermediary inputs. Yeah. So for Vietnam to, you know, increase its export, mm -hmm. actually, you know, one period before, mm -hmm. we end up seeing bigger trade deficit. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I just mm -hmm. have to keep telling people mm -hmm. that, hey, you know, talking about Vietnam's economy, don't talk about trade deficit. You know, trade deficit is very misleading. It simply means that a lot of activities are going on. When we compare the foreign direct investment between 2009 and 2010, mm -hmm. the 2009 foreign direct investment, good part of that went to the real estate market. And, you know, caused a little bit of bubbles, you mm -hmm. know, here and there. Mm -hmm. Compared to that, the composition of the foreign direct investment in 2010 mm -hmm. has moved to manufacturing. How much of that is moved to was manufacturing? Uh, I'm, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really didn't remember the exact yeah. amount. But you know, actually, it, there was a very, you know, significant. Significant. You know, there, there was a significant shift, you know, really to, you know, the impact on the total size, you know, the volume of Vietnam's imports. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a bad thing? Okay, you know, okay, in 2010, because of that, you ended up seeing greater uh, imports. But mm -hmm. uh, that means that, you know, you actually acquired the capacity mm -hmm. to produce more, export more in the mm -hmm. future. And so, you expect that shift towards manufacturing to continue um, beyond yes. 2010? Yes. yes. Well, actually, in 2010, we have also seen a uh, very interesting increase in the uh, approvals of you know, foreign direct investment. Um, last year, the licenses are given for some of the major uh, investment. Major like, projects in major Vietnam. Like, you know, are they in real estate as well? Or? No, 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 no. no. I, I'm talking about the steel mills or right. you know, those you know, really heavy industry investment. Is, you know, heavy has, industry. Uh, be, been approved last year. Um, again, once, let's say like steel mills, you mm -hmm. know, they start producing, you know, they can potentially change the industrial structure or structure of the, you know, mm -hmm. the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, what's happening in a way is encouraging. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, now, how, how soon, let's say those, you know, steel mills or, you know, the new heavy industries will start producing? Mm -hmm. Not that soon. So but then we've got a preparation period moving forward into a, a better future. Right. Is that what you're yeah. saying? And you know, that's why, you know, I also say, you know, before people jump, you know, you got to bend your knees, okay? You go a little deep, right? And then only with that you can really jump high. Mm -hmm. You know, got to be the face to bend your knees. Mm -hmm. You know, so a bit bit roundish like cat, okay? You know, that's that's not a bad thing. What about Vietnam? In the overall perspective of emerging markets in Asia, where do you see Vietnam um, in comparison to other emerging markets? Last year in particular, in mm -hmm. year 2010, uh, actually not only Vietnam, uh, Indonesia or Philippines, they have done well yeah. you know, among the ASEAN countries. Actually, you know, in the Singapore's recovery mm -hmm. from the global economic crisis mm -hmm. You know, was remarkable. Actually, you know, the, what happened, you know, in Singapore 
year before was also shocking. But then, um, so the Vietnam's you know recovery or you know steady economic growth in 2010, mm -hmm. in a way it was great, but then it was not that exceptional. How is Vietnam performing in terms of GDP growth rate in comparison to other EMA? Oh, 6.8 percent growth still is the highest among the ASEAN members. Okay, so you know that's. So is inflation? Uh, inflation is the highest too. <laughs> so you know that's that's why I say yeah. you know we can't just you know talk about you know the you know growth rate being the highest you know whether it's the best thing mm. you know it's good only to some extent. So have you seen Vietnam having uh, measures to curb inflation uh, moving forward? I should say. Uh, Authorities are, of course, making a lot of efforts. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the efforts are good. Now, some of the efforts are a bit worrisome. Now, the new Let's talk about that worrisome. Worrisome, worrisome thing that, you know, actually, Vietnamese government, mm. if it wants, you know, is capable of controlling prices mm -hmm. of so many things. You know, monitoring the prices have started. Now, mm -hmm. many companies go to report to the government on the prices. And what has the government done with the price monitoring data that they've got? So far, they haven't really moved to mm -hmm. the price control mm -hmm. as such. But, you know, clearly showing you know, what government is showing is the preparedness, that you know, if they have to move to control the prices, mm -hmm you know, then they will do so mm -hmm. to stop inflation. I think that's a signal they're mm -hmm. sending out. If you really would like to see healthy development of market economy mm -hmm. in Vietnam, mm -hmm. actually pricing control, you know, should not really be the most preferred means to control inflation. What would you advise the government to do then? Very, Very conventional, conventional means mm -hmm. that, you know, the tightening of the monetary policy tightening of the fiscal policy, reduce the you know, budget deficit, okay, you know, those in a way. Mm. So you, do you mean that you actually see some risks in this area um, towards maintaining Vietnam's or developing Vietnam's macroeconomy in the future? Yes, I do. Mm. You know, lack of transparency, mm. uh, lack of information data, okay, so that's, that's one major concern. Mm. And now, Monetary data is the same thing that, you know, uh, you know, very often people ask, you know, hey, what is the exact amount of foreign exchange reserve? Mm. It's very important, actually, that, you know, the transparency really creates, you know, really the, provides better comfort to the investors in particular. I think it's one, you know, very simple truth. Mm. What else do you think is the risk um, for Vietnam in 2011? This year mm. will be a very difficult year to really balance the desire to grow and the need to control inflation. So are you saying that Vietnam has a very, very strong desire to grow and not putting enough pressure on controlling what's happening at the moment? I have to say so. Uh, you know, and it's really a matter of courage. Enough courage to slow down. So yeah. you're not talking about growing, you're talking about slowing down. Right. Actually, mm. the, you know, obtaining growth is not that difficult, mm. but then controlling, okay, restraining, you know, the, the limiting whatever the growth, you know, potentials for this year, mm. okay, in order to really, you know, put the cap on the inflation. So if the government is not dealing with um, inflation right now, let's not talk about growing because it's going to create more problems for the country in the future. Right. So. This year, you know, if Vietnam wants to achieve, let's say, 8% growth, yes. it can. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, if you are going to achieve 8% mm -hmm. growth this year, mm -hmm. chances are the inflation rate, you know, mm -hmm. will remain double digit. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that's the price mm -hmm. you have to pay for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try to, you know, determine to bring down the inflation rate, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, to be in, in line with other Asian neighbors. You know, last year, mm. all the other Asian countries, you know, inflation rate we're talking about was just around 5 or below 5 percent. Mm. Now, if Vietnam can really align itself mm. with its Asian neighbors, mm -hmm. now, that may mean that, you know, okay, even for this year, 2011, mm. 
Uh, Vietnam may need to see slower growth mm. than last year. So you're talking about, about a year of building the foundation yes. before you actually move forward. Right. That takes me back to the forecasted figures for Vietnam in 2011, though, mm -hmm. in terms of GDP growth and inflation rate and, and um, other figures. Do you have, have you actually released any of those forecasted figures? Not yet. Right now, the government, you know, official forecast is to, you know, grow at 7 to 7.5 percent, you know, with the inflation rate, you know, of 7 percent. What would you like to say in terms of these figures for 2011 from your point of view? 5 percent inflation? At least the target. Mm. Now, whether you can achieve it, achieve mm. it or not, mm. but then I do hope Vietnam's growth rate, you know, to remain at let's say six percent. Mm. I think it's very important because that's gonna really, you know, bring the confidence mm -hmm. of the investors back. Last question. Oh, already <laughs> you should last. be happy right. about it. <laughs> no, 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 so, in summary. Yeah. Um, what do you think the prospects are for Vietnam's economy mm -hmm. um, in 2011 if you're sending that message to potential investors out there internationally? Let me start from a positive story. Yeah. If you look at you know, Vietnam you know, as the destination of investment, mm -hmm. looking at the potentials for 5, 10, 15 years. Long-term vision. Right then this is a place to be. What's so, the flip side of it? Flip side of that, now, if you're really looking at just one year, year 2011, mm. 2011 may not be the easiest year for mm. Vietnam mm. because it has to keep fighting you know, mm. against inflation. Mm. It has to keep fighting against some negative perceptions. Beyond 2011 is what yeah. you should look for. Yeah, we expect, let's say, you know, from this year to next year, there are going to also be uh, major reform efforts of the state-owned enterprises. Mm. You know, that's going to also give, you know, very interesting, you know, unique opportunities. Mm. You know, as first year as a middle-income country. So your message would be look to Vietnam as a long-term, medium to long-term market, yes. and 2011 may be a rough year, mm -hmm. um, but look beyond 2011. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Konishi, for being um, on the show with us today. Any last word to the audience? You know, Vietnam you know, has a lot of potentials, a lot of good people, so you know, please do come and see <laughs> what's going to happen. AGP has sent us a very clear message on Vietnam being a long to medium term market. While 2011 can be a rough year for Vietnam to deal with immediate issues in terms of inflation, monetary policy, currency stability, and balance of payments, we should look beyond 2011 while Vietnam is still building its foundation during its first year of being a middle-income country. Let us thank Mr. Konishi for a great overview on Vietnam's macroeconomic outlook. If you have questions for this topic, please feel free to send them to fayetteinsidevietnam.com.vn. For past episodes and show updates, please visit Inside Vietnam on WordPress, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you very much for being here with us today, and I certainly look forward to welcoming you back in two weeks at 6.20 p.m. Vietnam time on VTV4. Until then, I hope the year of the cat will bring you lots of luck and sound investment decisions for Vietnam. <laughs>